So I've got a complicated problem on my hands. On the one hand, I want to build a machine learning model for this data here. Um, on the other hand, I know the data is really bad. Uh, well, I'm not going to say it's really bad. It's actually good data, but it's not easy to find patterns in. This is data from Astro Data Bank regarding lots of people and their stuff. So if I execute this data that I have and uh, kind of read the file, you can see what I'm working with and what the center of the problem is. I'm starting off with a file that has traits from ADB, Astro Data Bank. And each of these rows represents a person. And if they had a trait marked in Astro Data Bank, abuse alcohol, abuse drugs, etc., then it shows up in this table. And after all those traits are listed, we have the position of their sun, their moon, Mercury, and so on, and a whole bunch of asteroids by sign. There is, there are difficulties in working with this kind of data, um, not least of which is that for machine learning, there just really aren't enough um, samples here. You see that I have a little over 1,100 rows. That's not going to be enough to come up with good patterns here, not in a basic machine learning model. And also, you can see how sparse this data is. Uh, now, I've, I've worked with this kind of thing before, this kind of machine learning model, and I'm telling you, this is very problematic for trying to come up with some way of, of, of teaching the machine to find the astro patterns. So we actually need to solve two problems. One of them is we need to build the machine learning model here in nine. And the other problem is that we need to determine which of the combinations of all these thousand asteroids are even going to tell you anything about, you know, disadvantaged or eccentric on, on data that really has a lot of missings, a lot of missings. And because we have so many missings, we don't actually know if this person was eccentric in private. And then this person here was completely not eccentric. They were just normal. Um, the missings are, are would we'd basically be building a model on a lot of nothing. And uh, in some previous videos, I actually walked through the process of building a machine learning model for this kind of data. It was consistently producing bad results or incomplete results. Um, but... This may be, if you're doing astrological research and you want to do machine learning, this may actually be the kind of data that you work with. Good luck um, producing a model that can actually find what's responsible for these, these traits. But uh, we're going to work with this data anyway. Um, so, so let me kind of review the problems with this one more time before we start building the model. One, the data is too sparse. It's got too many missings. So we don't know if activists actually apply to him or her or this person here, but didn't apply at all to these other people, right? The data is too sparse. The data set is too small. In addition, these are not fine-grained enough. So what I've done here is pulled ephemeris files for all of these people, and these are actually folks listed in Astro Data Bank. I pulled out their names, though, for anonymity. And here you only have 12 bins, 12 categories, right? Um, but, but it doesn't narrow it down by degree, so you don't know if it's at the beginning of Gemini and close to Taurus or at the end of Gemini and close to Cancer or in the middle of Gemini and more Gemini. Um, so this isn't fine-grained enough, grained enough at all. This is just not the kind of data where you would expect a machine learning model to really produce what you need. Um, there are things that you'll have to do with loss metrics in order to target specificity or precision instead of accuracy because it's, it, it gets all crazy. But again, we're going to set it up. Now, that's the machine learning side of the problem that we're going to try to address. There's another side of the problem, and it revolves around figuring out which of the combinations of these 1,000 asteroids is going to even be worth looking at. I will tell you more about that problem, which we'll have to solve um, in the middle of the recording. Uh, but I'll tell you more about that problem when we get to it, because right now it's, it's, it's less of an issue. It'll be an issue in a couple of minutes, though. 
the the idea that we don't know which. Your instinct is to say, well, let's just dump them all in. You say that now until it's all of these times 12. And then it, it starts to become a problem. Uh, it gets closer to image recognition. And, and on your personal computer, if you're trying to just do this for funsies and learn how to set up a machine learning model, um, you do not want to have 12,000 columns worth of this. And we'll get to the strategy for addressing that shortly. So first thing we want to do is narrow down our, our uh, space here. So what I'm going to do is go get a column filter and I'm going to pull all of my traits out and keep all of my keep all of my uh, asteroids in. Here we go, right here, starting at Sun. So these are all the traits or labels, and these are all the planets, and I call them all asteroids, right? Starting with Sun. We want to pick only one of these. So let's pick, uh, I don't know, random. Family large. This is truly random. I've, I've like not done this before. Um, okay, so we have family large, and we're going to try to see which of these predict a large family. <laughs> That's we're, we're probably going to produce a model that finds no such thing. Um, but the setup will be really interesting. Let's enforce exclusion of all these. That is, we're going to leave all these out. And we're going to make sure that these stay in. Um, yeah. Okay. So pick the label, which is the thing that we want. That's the that's the ADB trait, Astro Data Bank trait. And then leave in features. And those are going to be the asteroids. So this is our machine learning jargon. Okay, so we've left all that in. Now I'm telling you, you're probably not going to want to research family large um, every time. We're probably going to need to rename this column. And we'll also need to um, we'll we'll also need to capture the name to put back on the table later. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a column expressions node, column expressions right here. Wait a minute. Before I use a column expressions node, let me do some surgery on this. Let's use a column splitter. Splitter. Yeah. What I would really like to do is take that label off of here and leave everybody else in. So, so family large is like a custom trait. We want to separate the trait from everybody else. So I'm going to enforce the inclusion of all of my asteroids. And that's going to be on the bottom. And then I'm not going to care what this is. That will allow me to change this column. So I'm going to keep those. Set separate label. And that's the top from features. And that's the bottom. Okay. So we've got that. Boom. And let's see what the bottom looks like. Okay, cool. All the features are in there on the bottom. Right click. And the labels are at the top. Nice. Okay, so what I would like to do is copy this. See this here? The uh, I just want to copy this whole thing. I want to rename it, right? Um, but if I'm picking different traits, this won't always be called family large. So really what I want is the zeroth column, no matter what the name is. And that's why I'm using the column expressions node instead of the column rename node. I'm going to put in a new expression, and I'm just going to say pick column zero. Okay, it's missing. The first one is missing, but we're going to rename this as label. And is it a string? It is a string. Okay. Um, you know, actually, I sure wish I could recode this. I wonder if there's an if somewhere in here. 
Mm, there probably is, but it's 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 not obvious to me how to do it. Um, I guess you could say missing is missing, right? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not gonna mess with it. Let's let's just leave it like this. Label. Okay, so it's it's a it's a copy, but it's named generically, and we're gonna operate on the generic. I am going to say create a generically named copy of whatever label we chose. Okay. Then I'm going to use a column splitter again. And I'm going to keep the label on the bottom. And I'm going to not care what this was called. You'll see why I'm doing this in a second. Keep label on bottom. But operate on the, the uh, topic we chose. Top. Okay. There we go. This label is going to be put back onto this group in a second. Why did, why did we do this? What am I trying to do here? Okay, first of all, let me use a row filter. Remove missings. Missings. Exclude by attribute value, only missings. Remove missings to get a first row with the topic name. Okay. Because what I'm trying to do, let me take that off, because what I'm trying to do actually is have this be just the first row, but it's going to have to have something in it. And that way I can use a table column, table actually row to variable node, which is just going to peel off the first line. Peel topic from first line. It's going to peel it, but we know it's not missing because we just kicked all the missings out. So we are guaranteed to get a variable called family large. You see, now it's it's not actually in a table. It's like stored up in the top of a node in the attic. But this allows us to keep track of what the name of the topic was without having all of our operations have to mess around with dropping labels and renaming them and everything. Now, in the meantime, we have a little bit of an issue here because this is not going to work in a machine learning model. It needs to be ones or zeros. So the next thing we need to do is recode it. We'll recode it with a rule engine. Let's do a rule engine. Put it in there. Missing equals zero else one. This is what we're trying to do. So if it's not missing the label, right? Thank goodness we left a generic name for this because we wouldn't even know what topic this was if we didn't call it label. If it's not missing zero, make it a one. Otherwise, in the default, and this is how you put default, you just put capital true make it zero. And this is going to replace the label column as it is. And boom, we have recoded our values as ones or zeros. Next, this here, th this gets ugly, and you're, you're about to find out why. In order to run this through a machine learning model, we actually have to have all of these as ones or zeros. There is a single node that does that. It's called the one to many node. One, two, many right here. This is the node. And what it does is something called one-hot encoding. So this one-to-many node is going to take 
this column and make a new version called F Sun Scorpio, F Sun Gemini, F Sun Leo, F Sun Virgo. And it's going to make 12, um, 12 different columns. And it's going to put a one or a zero in there. It's really neat. It's really easy. Here is the problem. The problem is that we're going to get a wide table. And if you're doing this on your home computer, like I'm doing it with mine, um, you're not going to want nine to ever see 12,000 columns here. Um, so we're going to have to find a little bit of a workaround for, for this issue. Um, we want to convert all of these, but we have to think ahead a little bit about how big we want this table to be. You can see that we have a thousand columns and we have a thousand rows. So apparently nine's not having a problem with that. It will have a problem when it's a thousand rows and 12,000 columns um, for, for each of the 12 signs that are possible here. Nine doesn't like wide data. Uh, it's just, it's, I guess it's something the way memory is allocated or something. Um, but, but if we can somehow turn the data sideways and make sure Nime never sees the wide data, then we win. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to pass in one column at a time. We're going to use the one to many node to produce those 12 columns. And then we're going to transpose those one at a time, right? Um, so, so that's going to be our strategy. We're going to basically feed it into a filter, turn it sideways, and then stack that stuff because we want it stacked at the very end. We want 12,000 rows, not 12,000 columns. Um, and we're also going to need that for another reason. Um, I think now is, is no, now's not a good time to, to tell you about the issue that we're going to have. I'll tell you about that issue shortly. What, what I'm going to do is put in a column list loop. Oh, look at that. Column splitter. Column list loop is very common. It's near the top of my recommendations. Column list loop is just going to feed them all in, right? So I'm going to enforce exclusion on nothing. Every column that we've filtered in is going to get passed in here. And we don't care. If we add new columns, they're going to come over here because we're not enforcing inclusion. So there you go. We're going to say for every column... Okay, starting with the first column, boom, sun. We're going to do a one too many node. One too many. Okay, one too many. All right, look at what happened. It took the original column and said, oh, there are 12 different kinds of categories in here. Make a column for each one. Uh, now, this is interesting. It doesn't have the title on it. It, 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 when you do them in chunks, it'll say F Sun Scorpio, F Sun Gemini, and so on. It's okay that it doesn't have the title on it, though, because that gives us a chance to control how we concatenate the title in the, in the category. So I'm going to go back in here, first of all, and remove the included column, because we don't want that original string. The machine learning model can't handle it anyway. So remove that included column. All right. All right, cool. Uh, we do want to tell ourselves that the new column name for this is related to the sun. So luckily for a column list loop, the loop keeps track of the name of the column you're on. So I can just pull that in as a variable and put it on the columns. And we're going to do that with a rename, a column rename. First of all, we're going to say one hot encode the feature. Okay. Now let's do a column rename. Column rename. Column rename. But if you're familiar with Nime, you know all about this one. We're not going to use this one. We're going to use a column. Where is it down here? Column rename, column regex rename. Here we are. The regex rename allows you to capture the original name. And what this dot plus says is in a group, so just consider a whole chunk, we need one character and then any number of characters after it. So it's just gonna it's just gonna keep track 
of what the column name started out as. And then this dollar one says, put that back. But here, we're gonna have to put the name of the, hmm, curious. Uh, we're gonna have to put the name of the column we're on there, but I can't just put it in this box. Okay, I have to, I have to do some surgery on this. We're gonna use a variable. Uh, no, 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 I think it's a, is it variable? String manipulator. String manipulation variable. Here's how that goes. From this guy's data, not his data, this guy's uh, meta information at the top, it's invisible. You pull off that little ear up there, boom. Now we're operating on that data. See, right, you have your table. But then you also have what are called flow variables, which live up in the attic of your table. And we really want to work with this value here. So the red stuff, you can just pull them. They're on every node, but they're invisible, like little Mickey Mouse ears. They can go to, they can go from, but we'll come in here. And that current column rename, we're going to join it, join it with a... Mm, what's a good what's a good joiner? Let's join it with a colon because we can. I'm pretty sure none of my asteroids have a colon in them, and we can split on the colon later if we need to. So we'll join it with a colon, and we'll join it with a dollar one. Okay, we'll see if this works, and we'll call this new title. It's going to be a variable now because this is the string manipulation variable. Create new title for this group of one hots. Okay, there. Run it. And when we look at the variables, look, F sun colon dollar one. That's not correct, right? Wait a minute, it will be. We're going to feed that variable into this column rename regex. And then See that? Instead of using the replacement here, we're going to go into flow variables and use the replacement here. New title. Will it work? Yeah, look at that. F sun colon Scorpio. Nice. Now, I need to turn this sideways because the column list loop is it's 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 made all my 12 but remember it's going to make 12,000 of these and we don't want it to go this way we want it to build that way because that's the way nime will understand it so we're going to say rename one hot columns all right so the next thing we want to do is probably transpose this one at a time transpose it and look at that. All the, all the people are up here now, and all the different values are right here. Okay, good, good show. This is obvious what it does. I'm going to delete it. And then we just collect these. Go to column list loop and go to loop end. Where is the loop end? Okay, I don't see it. Loop end. This guy here. Whoops. Connect him to the transpose. And I'm do I add in no, I'm not adding any columns to this. They're all the same. Generate new row IDs. Mm, no, I don't think I want to do that. No, I need to leave them unmodified because, because see these? These have the names I want, definitely, and they're going to be unique. So we'll leave them alone. Leave them unmodified. There's not going to be any in empty input table. So we're just going to leave all these blank because we definitely want this structure to be preserved. And it's just going to stack F Sun Scorpio, F Sun Gemini, F Moon Scorpio, F Moon Gemini, and so on and so forth. And it's going to keep all these columns for all 1,129 people. All righty. I'm going to run it. It should be a lot faster than the whole 12,000 business. 
I waited 17 minutes yesterday for it to do um, 12,000 of these. And that's terrible. That's like really bad. Um, it, it tells you that your data is too, too crazy when that happens. Let's see how long this one takes. Will it take 17 minutes? It really shouldn't because it's transposing. And if I click quickly enough, look at that. It's already on column, you probably can't see it, column 400. Wow. It's truly going to take about a minute and a half compared to trying to do the one-to-many on 1,000 becoming 12,000 columns using a one-to-many and then a transpose. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you tried this in nine, you're going to, you're going to, if it seems like we're taking a side road, trust me, you're going to want to do it this way um, when your data gets too big. This way, NIME never, ever has to deal with a colossal table. Anyways, for every column, one hot encode and turn sideways. Look at how quick that was. Bam. Whoa, look at what we got here. We have 12,420 of these guys. There's another reason why we want this thing turned sideways. Now let me tell you about the second problem that, that comes with machine learning here. Machine learning is essentially taking layers of, of these uh, objects. You could call them matrices, you could call them tensors, you could call them like a little, little value or whatever. And it's gonna let it's gonna let all of your variables, in this case we have 12,000 variables, filter into their little object, and then they're gonna multiply and slide each other over with some addition or subtraction in combination, and they have layers, right? Those combinations are basically called layers. There's a layer of these inputs, and they're multiplying, and then they feed in, and they multiply and add, and they feed in, and that's machine learning, basically. It's just a really, really, really exotic matrix mix-up. Um, but 12,000 12, of these, I mean, we're not working with images, right? Um, and and it's, not, it's not only that. Uh, you'll find if you try to work with these models, most of these are, first of all, they're correlated with each other. If Lataba, for example, is in Scorpio, we know it is not in 11 of the other signs. Why in the world would we want to have times 12 on that? So, so this, this 12,000 sets of variables, on the one hand, it's kind of necessary for the machine learning model to, that we're going to build to work with ones and zeros because we don't know which sign that Lataba is going to be in or the, any of the asteroids is going to be in. But on the other hand, it's like, well, if you know one, you know 11 and the other ones don't apply. And so you've got a lot of like data that doesn't, it, it, it bogs the model down. And furthermore, because we're dealing with such sparse data, most of these won't even affect the trait we chose. We chose family large and You'll find out as you try to get correlations with all 12,000 of these one-hots, it, it, they don't even affect it. So a problem I ran into, okay, now we're going to shift gears and, and stop the machine learning stuff for a second. A problem I ran into was exactly this problem. How do you know which of these to even look at? We've got 12,000 rows, and I guarantee you nobody wants to run ANOVAs or regressions or even the machine learning on a bunch of stuff that may not even matter, Right. That, that asteroid may be just sitting out there floating in space and it has effectively nothing statistically significant to do with what we're studying. We've got to cut those guys out. Consider this thought experiment. Let's, let's create a table. This is a kind of a side road, but it's a side road that we're going to need. Imagine that you have data that looks like this. Okay. And imagine that you have data that looks like this. Okay, there. If you want to know if this and this are even worth considering in terms of correlation, then there's got to be some quick way to just kind of like ballpark it. Imagine that this, for example, is family large. And this one is the sun in Aries. Well, 
if you look at this data, you can see these two are the same. These two are the same. These are the same. These are the same. Looks like four out of six of them are the same. Okay, that's, that's, very, that's, that's, that's very nice. Now compare this other data. Let's say this one is sun in Gemini. This one, if you compare this one, these are different, but these are the same. These are different, but these are the same. These are different, but these are different. What ends up happening is that if you've got a column which is essentially random, like it's random whether this thing and this thing are correlated, they're never, this one's always zero, so it doesn't care what this is, right? The closer we get to randomness, the more we can expect the amount of sameness or differentness to be 50%. Now, compare that. Let me delete this guy because he's in the way. Compare that to this one. In this case, they're exactly the same all the way through. Sameness or differentness equals 6. Or compare this one. These are exactly inverted. They're always different. And so now their sameness is zero. Can you imagine how if the sameness is three out of these six rows, it's closer to 50%. But if it's nearer to zero or nearer to six, it's more on the extremes. Nearer to zero means something in terms of perfect anti-correlation. Nearer to six means something in terms of perfect correlation. And nearer to three means almost random. We would love to eliminate the ones that are almost random. And this is what I call the XOR strategy. I, I was thinking about how to solve this problem a couple of years ago, and it vexed me because there's certain nodes that you need in nine in order to do this easily. Um, but the bottom line is that we want them to be the same or we want them to be different, um, or the inverse of that. And if we can get them on, if we can get two columns, any two columns on sameness or differentness and add that up, we can kind of pre-filter the stuff that doesn't matter. Now, how does XOR work? Logical XOR means that if this piece of data, we'll call it a bit, is the same between these two, make it false. And if they're different, make it true. So look at this one. These two are different. And so the XOR on it would be one. These are different. The XOR is one. Same thing. Different. Different. They're always different. So the XOR on this one is one. They're perfectly anti-correlated. Now consider this one. Okay, this column is exactly the same as this column. The XOR on this one will be zero. Same again, XOR on this one will be zero. We don't want them both. Logical XOR means we don't want them both to be true. So all of these are zero. Can you see that the sameness adds up to, well, we're, we're going to stop talking about sameness or differentness, and we're just going to talk about XOR. The XOR result adds up to zero here. It adds up to the, the minimum here, and it adds up to the maximum here. And if these were completely random, like you didn't have this set up with ones and zeros, you just had zero all the way through, it'll be closer to six. Imagine that we're able to just take all the set bits between the label that we're looking at and the 12,000 possible features that are under consideration and if they're closer to three, the average randomness, kick them out. That way we don't have to even do any kind of uh, regression or light. You know, we're just trying to trim our data set because we have too much data. And if we're working with like text or uh, document vectors where you've got 15,000, 40,000, you know, th that kind of stuff. It'll take us forever to even just hit a ballpark to see whether there are even any patterns here. So what we're going to do is basically take our label up here, which had ones or zeros for whether the Astro Data Bank person had it. 
and compare it to every one of those one hotted columns that we just produced. Now they're rows because we transposed it, um, whether, which also have ones or zeros. And if we can XOR those two, then we can basically count the number of bits and eliminate everybody who's closer to average and keep everyone on the extremes. The ones on the extremes are closer to what we care to investigate, um, if there are any patterns at all. Because again, the ones on the extremes are closer to either perfect correlation, XOR makes them false, or perfect anti-correlation, XOR makes them true. Okay, And that's why we turned the table sideways. Because XOR, it's, it's doing it in NIME is, is really neat. And I told you, it took me two years to figure this out um, because I did not know about two of the two of the nodes that are critical for this stuff. First of all, we're going to need, in order to, to do that filtering, I mean, do I really want to check 12,000 of these guys? Probably not. And again, the whole point of this is that we don't want to dump 12,000 folks into our machine learning model when most of them are just going to be in the way. I mean, totally just times 12 or whatever. 12,000, come on. We don't even need that. So what we'll do, I mean, at least not in the beginning, if we don't even know if the patterns exist. So what we'll do is XOR the label against all of these guys. We'll need three nodes in order to make this happen. One of them is a column appender. No, not an appender. Aggregator. One of them is a column aggregator. Another one is a brand new friend of mine which can really mess things up if you don't know when to use it, the cross joiner. And another one is the create bit vector. All righty, these are what we need. And remember, the object here is to not work with 12,000 of these folks. But which ones? We'll find out. First things first, what we want to do is turn this oh we need it sideways okay let's let's make this sideways it needs to needs to be ready to combine with our guy here there okay good and it has the same column headers whoops same column headers great we're going to create a bit vector out of it let's note the data type Ah, integers. They're all integers. Okay. So we're going to create a bit vector from multiple numeric columns. Well, this one's easy. It's already set up. Let's let's label it label vector. And it's dense. Dense means that we're going to say, is it 1 or 0, 1 or 0, 1 or 0. Sparse means it's so sparse that we're going to say the ones are located here. And, you know, th there you go. Um, but we're going to be XORing this, so it needs to be dense like everybody else. And we're going to remove the column, the original thousand columns that went into this. And a bit vector now takes you from here, 1129 columns, to here. One. One column, which is ready to do XORing on. Yeah, uh huh. Right? Create a bit vector. It's obvious what this does. Well, let's let's say make um, make they they were formerly rows. So we're gonna say make samples into a single XOR XORable um, field uh, value. We'll call it value. Okay. We also want to do that with these guys. So let's, let's do that. Make sample samples labels. And this we're going to say make samples features into a single XORable value. Boom, it's so fast when it's not 12,000 columns, I'm telling you. There we go. Yeah, 
Yeah. Next, let's use our friend, the cross joiner. Um, the cross joiner here and here, what it does is it creates a combination out of everybody in this table with everybody in this table. So if you had five rows here and 10 rows here, you're going to end up with 50. It's just a combination of both guys. But all we're trying to do, this is the hardest thing when trying to learn how to do this. Um, all we're trying to do is just put this label vector and attach it to every one of these guys. So let's go ahead and cross join. Oh, look at how fast that was. Nice. So this, oh, no, it's not called label vector. Back up. This is called feature vector. Feature. Feature vector. There. There we go. Label vector and feature vector. Okay. See, it's always the same thing. And, um, hmm. Ah, it's a bummer. Look, look at what it did. I, now, I, I know from having seen this problem before that I don't really like those labels looking like that with label underscore on them. I guess we can take them off later. Oh, man. Is there a way to separate it for new row IDs? Bottom tables suffix name. Mm. Append top datas. Oh, yeah. I like this. Look. Append bottom data tables row ids nice this is exactly what we want watch this aha it kept them it kept them as they were and because it kept them oh um make label cross feature rows for xoring Okay, now because it kept the original, we're going to put them back as row IDs because now we're creating a mess with our row IDs and we don't really like that. So second row IDs are going to replace the original, not the original, it's going to replace that mess that we made with the cross joiner. And look, the word label is taken off of them and they're just the same row IDs that they were before. Okay. I would love to delete that column, remove selective column. Restore um, feature, feature row IDs. All righty. How am I doing on time? 42 minutes. Okay. Well, I think we're, I think we're all right. Cool. Let's do some XOR. Column aggregator. Look at this. We're going to aggregate these two using bit vector XOR right there. And we're, we don't actually need the aggregation columns because I don't know if person number 530 was or wasn't. So I don't care. We're going to take those out and we'll just do an XOR. All right. Nice. Yep, yeah, okay, we XORed it. Now what? Let's, now that we've produced that column, let's have another column aggregator to operate on the column we just made. We couldn't do it the first time because this column didn't exist. But now we're going to operate on this and we're going to use something called bit vector set count. I'm going to take this old guy out. And I'm going to call this bits. How many of those bits? And we're going to remove again. We, we don't we don't care about that that binary thing. So we will care a lot about this next one though. How many of those bits are ones? Let's find out. Count the number of ones in each vector each XOR, XOR vector. Uh-huh, look at this. Now, I don't, I, I don't know if these numbers are high or low 
or anything. Here's what I do know. In statistics, you have something called a normal curve, a bell curve. And what is considered normal is what is within one kind of window of this strict average. So if I've got a list of numbers that go from 0 to 100 and the average is 40, right? Um, um, and, and, you know, some of the higher ones are outliers or whatever. Let's say the average is 40. There's a certain window around 40, which is still considered normal. So 42 is still normal. 48 might still be normal. That window is called the standard deviation. And so within one standard deviation, you're still considered normal. So for example, uh, human height, uh, American male, average height, something like 5'10-ish, um, with a standard deviation of four inches. That means if you're 5'7 or you're 6'1, you're considered normal in terms of standard deviations. We actually don't want the normal guys in here because that means they were closer to random, if you remember the strategy here. How do we tell what constitutes normal? Let's use a normalizer. There we go, normalizer. And the normalizer is gonna be on bits, and we're gonna use something called z-score normalization. A z-score just tells you how many of those windows you're out. So. Okay, how many standard deviations? Let's say that. How many standard deviations away from the normal bit count is each row? Okay, it's really the mean, but I just said normal just because because I'm being sloppy. Alrighty. And again, we don't we didn't need we didn't need these. They they're meaningless to us. And we I mean, I don't know, 500 is normal or two. But the normalizer, look at this. See it's got negative numbers. But let's sort this descending. Wow. This thing is 26 26 standard deviations out from from, uh, wow, it's 26 standard deviations out from the normal. We're going to address this guy, though, Damocles, in a second, um, because there's, there's something wrong with this. Um, and this guy is negative three. There he is again, D Damocles. What is he doing? Turns out that Damocles in Libra and Damocles in Cancer and Virgo appear very, very, f I don't want to say very few times, because if you think about how we XOR um, what constitutes few and what constitutes many. One of them is, is the highest and one of them is the lowest. And at this point, it actually doesn't matter. All we want to do is keep the extremes. However, Damocles is extremely slow moving. So because it's slow moving, for the documented history of the people that we kept track of, Damocles is only going to be in a couple of signs. And it's definitely, not definitely, it's more likely to not be in the rest of the signs. So Damocles isn't going to tell us much at all. We really want to cut things like Damocles out. The only way we know in astro data whether Damocles is uh, is uh, doing too much is by kind of looking at its appearances both at the high or low. Now that's I'm going to leave that to you to kind of figure out, um, but I can tell you that Damocles, Hephaestus, Pluto. Actually, I'm not going to leave it to you to figure out because I'm going to. I'm going to uh, stop this recording soon and get back to the machine learning problem. But but know that we got it. We need to take Damocles out. Um, it's 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 going to end up wasting our our. It, it, it's it's telling us something by being twenty six up that really doesn't mean anything for our analysis. It just means it parked there as a as a body. And really, you're looking at things like Triburga. And, you know, those are those are asteroids that only appear a couple of times at the top. A quick way of of kind of figuring out which of these to keep and which of these to eliminate is to simply eliminate everybody who is outside of one standard deviation. You see this? Look at this. These are all normal. They're like one. Okay, I said eliminate everyone, but it's to keep everyone outside of one standard deviation. So 
We know this. Let's use a row filter. We're, we're going to get rid of those guys now. Let's do it now. And then we'll be able to end this recording here and, and move on to the machine learning in the next one. Um, I'm going to use a row filter. And I will say between negative one standard deviation and positive one standard deviation in the bit count, get rid of them. Eliminate normal appearances. Normal number of appearances. Now, let's see how good this is. This is, this is, a, this is great. This is what we wanted. See how we have 12,420 rows? When we chop out all the guys that behave normally in terms of their XOR, oh, we're, we've, we've cut out really three-fourths of them. So this is good. This is really good. And, and really, you know, you, you, you want exceptional appearances and 95% is two standard deviations. And so if I really just want to kind of not even mess with 3,000, I think that's too many. I don't want to put 3,000 units in my machine learning model uh, when I'm just testing to see if anything even holds, um, especially if some of these are going to compound, compound. If you think about it, each of these guys was multiplied by 12. And so you're going to have Triburga in Virgo, Triburga in Cancer, Triburga in Leo. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I want all that. So let's go to two standard deviations. Two standard deviations. Okay. These guys will all be considered within that average 95%. And what remains are the five percentiles. 396. All right. We will not be looking at some 12 thousand possible dud combinations. That's very good. Okay. Now, we, we, this, this is great because these are the only, these are really the only things that, the only placements that we care to put into our machine learning model. I, I need to do some sorting though, because I want to take out guys like maybe Maybe even Pluto, but, but but we want to take out the slow movers. So let's use a sorter, a sorter to, and we're going to sort by bits descending. Okay. And you'll see why we do this in a second. Okay. There's our guy, Damocles. There he is again, right? Now, Here's, here's what I want. These are all considered extreme. They're either very high in standard deviation or very low in standard deviation. There is nothing in between. What I want is specificity. In other words, if Cleopatra in Taurus specifically helps a large family, I really only want Cleopatra in Taurus here and I want everybody else to be average. Does that make sense? And I kick the average out. So I actually want anybody on this list to only appear a few times, not a lot. Does that make sense? Damocles as a slow mover is, is going to tell us that, you know, he was in Aquarius a lot. Actually, I have Damocles in Aquarius. Most of us do. <laughs> if you're if you're in your if you're in your 30s or 40s or 50s. You have Damocles in Aquarius. It's that slow. So um, at least it's there's a greater chance that you do. So let's count. Let's do a group by. First, let's see. Sort. Um, and, and we didn't really need to sort. I, I was just looking at it. Sort for visualization. Visualization. Okay. But then... Let's do a group by on this. And the group by is only going to count how many times. It's not grouping by anything. We just want to count how many times the thing shows up. Um, oh, yeah, well, wait a minute. I need to. I really want the. Oh, you, OK, look, see this. The, the, we, we want the asteroid to show up. 
and we need to count the asteroid without the sign attached. Okay, so let's peel off the row ID. What time is it here? Oh, yikes. Getting to an hour. Row ID. We're just going to create a new column, and we'll call them rows. We're not going to replace. All right. Okay, we got the row names. And now we can say get row IDs. And now I'm going to do a cell replacer, string replacer. It's a string replacer. The string replacer I want to use to get rid of everybody with a colon afterwards. So on rows, we're going to say capture a group that has any number of things in it. I'll just say a dot star. And then it can have a colon and then a dot star after that. But I don't care about that colon and the dot star. I'm not going to capture it. And I'm going to put what I captured back. Dollar one for the whole string, and we run it. Boom, only the asteroids. We chopped off everything in the back. Whoops, everything afterwards. We chopped off all the signs, right? I'm counting these. So we've got bits and we've got rows. Peel only asteroids. And now we're going to group by the asteroids and we will count the number of times they show up with any bits as a row. Let's just count the number of times they show up at all. That's all that is. Okay. And the answer is, oh, look at this guy, Salacia. He's slow. Aethra, he's slow. Let's, let me let me sort this, sort this. Whoops, normal click, descending. Look at our guy Damocles. He, it's too many times, too many times on this list. So this guy appears eleven times in the in extreme group, which means he parked, and everybody else was so rare, so anti-correlated with that one guy who parked, that Damocles becomes meaningless. So these folks who appeared like what it's essentially saying is that there are four places where Hildegard could contribute to a large family. Nah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not particularly interested in all that. So let's let's look at only. Ooh, look at these guys. These only appeared once. Hecate. These dudes. They only appeared once in the extremes. Everybody else was average. I like that. So let's get rid of anybody who appeared twice or more okay so we're really going to focus our machine learning on this this population here um i'm going to i'm going to cut out these folks get the number of extreme appearances per asteroid Okay, so we, we have the number of extreme appearances, and we don't want... Let's do a row filter. Let's go here. Row filter. We're going to say on rows, include only... Oh, no, it was bits. It was counting bits. On bits we're going to include only those with a maximum of one. There, look at that. Only keep asteroids with a single extreme appearance for this topic. But ours is large family. Okay? So this this is the group that we this is the group we want to keep. And we need to take them and like we we, we want 
this title, well, yeah, let's say it this way. We want these asteroids, but specifically the their 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 appearances in here to be the only ones that we keep from basically here, right? The original, the original kind of put together, like those are the only rows that we really want. And so let's, uh, let's, let's, let's take this guy, this combination of get row IDs and then peel only the asteroids and do that same peel on this group. Why, why would we want to do it on this group? Because this one has the proper, um, you know what? Mm, maybe we don't want to do it on this group. Maybe we want to do it on this group. Yeah, because this group, hmm, let me think about this. I, I only want to keep, let's see, the successful guys were these. These, these are the ones I want to keep. Okay, we are going to peel from this group. Execute. Okay. Say, so, yeah, so I have the right, I have the right uh, actual row ID, but I want to filter out according to this row filter list. Okay. So we're going to do that with a reference row filter here. We're going to take that table and keep on rows only the ones that survived this you didn't appear so many times in the extreme. Now we have only 114. Uh -huh. And they all appear really only once, or they should, because that's what we that's what we fit. Okay, so these 114 columns are the ones that we want to look at for this data from this table. So this one is, let's, let's, let's say, okay, filter the ones, filter for the rows we kept. Okay. And then we're going to do it again. This time, we're going to take all of these that were transposed. And now we have the 114 columns that we want. So we're going to filter for the data we want to look at. All right, include, and this is on the row IDs, right? And it's both of them, the row IDs. And let's see what we get here. 114 rows, we win, we win. Look at this. These are the ones that we wanna put into our model. We have used an XOR strategy and it's quick. Right, doesn't do any kind of like it's just the it's just the ballpark, right? We could have done this on twelve thousand columns, but thanks to the the XOR filtering, we're only doing it on one hundred and fourteen, which we know behaved in these more um, farther than standard deviation ways. The last thing we'll do in here is take this transposed recoding and put it on top. So let's use a concatenate. We're going to stack that feature back on the top right here. And what that does is put the label back on. And then one more time, the last step for now. And then we'll build the model in the next video. We're going to transpose. Stack label back on. And then we're going to transpose again. All righty. Look at this. Column-wise, here's the label. 
These are the features we want to look at. Only 115 columns. This is going to be a lot easier on us when we build our model because we're now looking at folks that we think had something to do with a large family. I will see you in the next video.